On this Thanksgiving Day, let's turn our attention back to 17th century America, about a decade after the very first Thanksgiving. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. The year was 1630. The location was the ship Arbella, which, like the Mayflower 10 years earlier, was headed to what's now Massachusetts. Like the pilgrims before them, the Arbella's passengers were devout Christians. They came to the New World seeking to practice their faith as they believed God commanded. Just prior to the Arbella's voyage, the group's leader, John Winthrop, delivered one of the great speeches in America's history, a sermon entitled A Model of Christian Charity. The sermon's best known for Winthrop's use of the biblical phrase, a city upon a hill. For nearly four centuries, that one phrase has shaped our American sense of purpose and our sense of what is often called American exceptionalism. Yet, what many think Winthrop meant by a city upon a hill is, well, wrong. In the sermon, Winthrop warned his fellow Puritans what was at stake in their attempt to create a new godly community. For we must consider, he said, that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us, so that if we shall deal falsely with our God in this work we have undertaken, and so cause him to withdraw his present help from us, we shall be made a story and a byword throughout the world. As historian Andrew Del Banco put it, Winthrop used the phrase not out of a desire for this new experiment to bring fame and image emulation, but out of a fear of notoriety. Winthrop's concerns about not failing God have been lost over time. His message, which was intended for a group of devout Christians, has been plucked out of Winthrop's context by politicians and pundits and reimagined as something quite different, as a founding document for the nation itself. For example, President Reagan used the expression at least 30 times while in office, often adding the word shining. And then Senator Barack Obama used the expression to describe the world watching what he called this improbable idea called America to see if it would succeed. And there are many other examples. What these all have in common is the substitution of the nation for the church. Winthrop's sermon was directed at a group of Christians who saw themselves as part of God's elect and their mission as an act of stewardship. The stewardship included, as Winthrop put it, that every man might have need of others, and from hence they might be all knit more nearly together in the bonds of brotherly affection. The exceptionalism Winthrop had in mind was to follow the counsel of Micah, to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. This meant not embracing this present world and prosecuting our carnal intentions or seeking great things for ourselves and our posterity. Instead, Winthrop urged, we must be knit together in this work as one man. We must delight in each other, make others' conditions our own, rejoice together, mourn together, labor and suffer together. Do this and others would see it failed to do it, and still others would see it. Even more, if they failed, God would allow their name, as Moses told the Israelites, to become a horror, a proverb, and a byword among all the peoples. Now, obviously, this is not the way city upon a hill or American exceptionalism is often understood today. Plucked out of their theological and historical context, Winthrop's words are used either for premature self-celebrations of national greatness or misunderstood to unfairly criticize the history of our nation. But in context, it's an admonition to embrace our responsibilities. Come to breakpoint.org, click on this commentary, and I'll link you to Winthrop's remarkable sermon. Share it, even read it aloud with your family this Thanksgiving. As we gather to give thanks today to God for all of his blessings, let all who are God's people recommit ourselves to let our light shine before others so that they might see our good works and give glory to our Father who's in heaven. From all of us at the Colson Center, happy Thanksgiving. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stumstreet. Street.